Hello there you beautiful people, now in the last video you learned about the structure of the Linux manual and you saw the way that it was broken up into 8 sections and those 8 sections each deal with a different part of the Linux experience. Now we're going to take that theory from the last video and we're going to turn it into practice in this video. So in this video you're going to learn how to search the manual and discover new commands, you're going to learn how to access the manual pages for those commands and you're also going to learn how to read them so that you can go out there and independently learn how to use new stuff. So so by the end of this video you'll have the independence to search for new commands and learn about how they work and this is going to put you in the driver's seat because it makes it possible for you to gain more control over your Linux system because you can start learning independently about how everything works rather than waiting for, for random chances that you randomly bump into learning new commands. So you can take a lot more of an active role in your learning and your development of the Linux operating system. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so now that you know that the manual is broken up into eight sections, how would you know what section to look in to find what you're looking for? Well, let's say that you wanted to look up information about the which command. First, to search the manual, you would have to use the man command. Now, the man command is short for the word manual, and it's the command that deals with everything to do with the manual, basically. Um, and this is why they're actually called man pages, because it's the man command that looks through the manual. Okay? Now, that's the command name, so we're good at that. Now we need to give it any options if necessary. And we're actually going to use the K option, which is what deals with searching. Okay, so we've got command name, then options. Now it needs an input. And the input that we're going to give it is the search term. So we type which. Okay, so we've got our command name, we've got our options, we've got our inputs, the same struct general structure that I was telling you about before. Um, but now what we're doing actually is we're using the man command to search the manual for this search term, this search term here called which, okay? And it's going to look all the way through the manual and find anything that might be relevant to that search term. It's like your own mini search engine, okay, for your manual. So if I press enter, we get quite a few uh, lines of output here, okay? So let's let's have a look at what this is. On the left here, you're going to get the names of certain manual pages, okay? So every single one of these is a manual page that is appropriate to this search term, okay? And on the right, you get a bit of a synopsis about um, that actual page, so you can pick which one might be most appropriate, okay? Um, and the other thing is in the parentheses here, you get the section number of the manual that that page is in. So for example, this command, uh, this this manual page is in the first section of the manual, which means it's a user command. Whereas this one is in the eighth section of the manual, which means that it is a more system administrative kind of thing. And this one is a in section five, which is going to be about a file, uh, file configuration, um, how, how the files are structured and things like that, information about how files are structured. So there we go. We can actually see at a glance whether it actually suits our needs or not. And if we decide that we want to take a further look, um, it seems like this one is exactly what we're looking for. It's in the user command section, and it, it's a command that locates a command. <laughs> um, we can actually take a deeper look at that by using the man command again. Then the section number. So the section number is one. And then we type the search term, or the, sorry, the, the page name, which is on the left there, which is which. Okay, and if I press enter, ta-da, we've opened up the manual page for the which command. Now, it's only very small, and once we've opened that, to close it and get back out, we just press the Q key on the, on the keyboard. So I press the letter Q, and I'm back out on my command line. So, for example, we could open up this sol section here, this sol thing, by doing man 6, because it's section 6, sol. And I press enter, and it opens up that, that manual page for Sol, which you can see at the top right there. Okay, Now, because the first section of the manual is used so often, you don't usually have to type the number 1 even. So instead of typing man1 which, as a nice shortcut, I can just type the word man, I can just type man which, uh, which will open up the same page, the same manual page, and you can see that it is in, indeed in section 1. Okay, So that's a shortcut. If you see that something is in section 1, you don't need to type the 1, you just type the actual name of the page. So like up here, we've got LCF, right? LCF is in section 1. I just type man LCF, and we see that we are now in the LCF man page in section 1, which means that it's a user command, okay? So that's how you would open up a manual page, and up next, now we're going to take a look at how you would actually read it.
Okay, so let's take a look at the man page for the witch command. So I'm just going to type man and then witch. And because it's actually a command that I've used very recently, I could have just pressed the up arrow key a couple of times that I get back to the same result. Okay, so I press man witch, press enter, and we've opened up the manual page. Now we can see that this manual page is actually broken up into the following sections. At the top we've got name, then we've got synopsis, then we've got description, then we've got options, then we've got exit status. Okay, now other sections that a man page may include are examples, um, a see also section, an environment section, things about bugs, things about authors, things about reporting bugs, um, history of the command, um, copyright things, stuff like that. Okay, but this is what we get in this specific manual page. Okay, so they're not always structured the same way, but they usually follow this kind of structure. Okay, now in the name section, we see that we are dealing with the which command and we see a little bit about what it does and this bit is actually what came up when we searched the manual in the first place okay this is exactly what came up we saw the name and then we had this little um, piece of information on the right hand side okay um, now in the description section this is where you this is where you really see what the command does and the description section is a very important section and it gives you a much more in-depth description of what the command actually does this is likely going to be one of the most useful parts of the man page for any command and as it will try to explain what the command does in plain English okay so you've got the which command description there and up here you've got the, in the synopsis section, we can see a layout of how to actually use the command. Aha! So do you remember when I was telling you that each command is structured differently and you need to read the manual pages to see how to use a command? Well, this is the section of the manual page that will tell you how to use the command, the synopsis section. So for the which command, we can see that first we type which, okay, the command name, and then we see the A option in some square brackets, which we'll come on to in a minute, and then some kind of file name, and then three dots, or other, also known as an ellipsis, afterwards. So let me explain what this stuff means. Okay, so first we enter the which command name. We just type which. Then we have the A option, which is optional. Now we know it's optional because it's inside these square brackets. In a man page, if something is inside square brackets, that means it's optional, okay? You don't have to enter it, but you can, okay? Now, next, after that, once we've entered our optional option, <laughs> we um, next you have to enter the name of a command uh, that you're actually looking for. Now, you can see, so, so you enter a name of a command you're looking for. So, for example, which maybe dash A and then echo, okay? That would show you where the echo command was. But you also see this ellipsis or these three dots. Now these three dots mean that you can enter more than one file name. So in other words, the which command can take more than one input. Aha, things are starting to fall into place now, right? So how do you know how many inputs a command takes? Well, you look at the man page, you look at the synopsis, and it'll tell you how many inputs it takes, okay? Now just to prove it, okay, just to prove this, we're gonna take what we've learned here and we're gonna apply it, okay? So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna clear the screen, pressing by holding control and L and we're going to see we're going to try and use the which command to find the date command and the cal command at the same time okay so we've used the which command we didn't give it the a option but we didn't have to because it's just option just optional like because we because it was in the square brackets and we've given it a one file name and then another file name okay so if we press enter ta -da, we see that we get two outputs and that it's found the locations of the date command and then the cal command we didn't need to run the command twice because if we look at the man page it tells us we can actually give it more than one uh, file name okay so that's really really useful and maybe not maybe something we wouldn't have known how to do if we had not looked at the man page and as i said um the things inside square brackets in the man page let me open up again things inside the square brackets are optional uh, this kind of stuff you don't have to have but you can have and if you want to know what it does you just go to the options section so if I put in the A option it says it'll print all matching path names of each argument so all matching path names so A is short for all so what I could do is I could type which um, I could do which date and cow but I could type dash A and see if that does any difference it actually it doesn't make any difference um, but it will show us all of the different uh all of the different results so maybe you know when i told you about searching from searching on the path um maybe this would allow us to look in folders that were later on in the path if they had the same name as where they were earlier on okay so there we go now there's other symbols in the manual pages such as angle brackets so these kind of things 
right? So if you have something inside here, inside a manual page, so if we had like which, and then it was like this, and then you had something, okay, inside angle brackets, um, anything inside the angle brackets is mandatory. That means you have to have it, okay? So if you see something inside angle brackets, that means you have to have it and you can't miss it out. All right. Um, so just bear that in mind. There's also the pipe character. So if I if you had an option here and it was something like, say you had the F option, okay? Because there's a pipe character between the two options, that means, okay, that you have to pick one or the other. Okay, so the pipe means one or the other. You cannot have both. So I couldn't type, I couldn't type which uh, which dash a f uh, date, okay, I would have to type which dash a or which dash f, okay, I couldn't have both, that's what happens if you see something inside, um, inside angle brackets, okay, so I'm just going to type my finger again, sorry, not angle brackets, uh, with a pipe in between them, okay, see what we're doing so far, uh, okay, that's probably what you'll come up with most of the time. Um, so this, these are all the different things that you'll see. You'll have the command name. You have some options. Um, it'll tell you which ones uh, are optional and which ones you need and which ones cannot be combined with others. Um, you'll see things that maybe are mandatory inside square brackets. Anything with a dot, dot, dot after it means you can have more than one thing. So if it's had like this, it was file name, wasn't it? And then dot, 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 that means you can have more than one file name when you use this command. Now, I'm actually going to put a PDF in the, resource, in the resource section for this lecture that lists out what the different symbols mean so you can use it if you ever need a quick refresher. But that's pretty much all you need to remember, okay? Just the, it, it, anything in square brackets is optional. Anything with a pipe in between it, you can only have one or the other. Anything in square, anything in angle brackets is mandatory. Anything with dot, dot, dot after it, you can use more than once. Okay, that's pretty much all you need to know. And if you want to know how to look up what different options do, just scroll down to the options section in the man page and it'll tell you exactly how to use them all. Okay, awesome. So we've covered a whole lot of stuff in this video and you should start feeling a lot more comfortable using the command line already. In this video, you saw how to search the manual using the man command with the K option. And after that, you can give it any search term that you want. And the man command will search the manual for that search term and give you a list of results as well as what those results are and what section of the manual page they're in. You saw how to access those specific manual pages and also how to read them for specific command structure. So we saw how to, how to actually use the which command using its manual page. And we saw the different symbols that might come up in the manual page to tell you how to use it. But I've attached a cheat sheet in the resources section for this video that I massively encourage you to use and keep on hand because it's going to give you an explanation of each of the different symbols that might show up in a manual page so that you can keep that to hand and, you know, make sure that you don't forget anything. But to ensure that you don't forget anything, up next we're going to have some practice. What we're going to do is we're going to go together and we're going to look at, we're going to search for a new command and we're going to read about how it works. We're going to look at its manual page and we're going to take that learning and actually apply it and show you how that how you would take a man page that you've never seen before and learn how to use it. So we're going to be applying what we've learned in this lecture about um, reading manual pages and apply it to a completely new command and go through it together. And after that, you should definitely feel as though, hey, any command or any manual page that I come up against, I'll know how to read and know how to use, which is going to give you a massive boost of confidence and a massive boost of independence for you to explore and learn more about the Linux operating system. So let's go ahead and jump into the next video and get some super, super cool practice.